All right, today we're gonna to move on to our next type of chemical reaction called a double replacement or double displacement reactions. You, um, you'll hear it said either way. I'll probably say it either way. So just know there are synonyms, replacement or displacement, doesn't matter. Um, and so what we're doing here is it's very similar to a single replacement um, where we had a metal switching place with a metal. Um, but the only thing here is in a single replacement, one metal was by itself. And with double, nothing is by itself, okay? So you're gonna have a metal and a non-metal, or this could be a polyatomic ion, and a metal and a non-metal, or a polyatomic ion. And so basically these first two things, A and D are gonna switcheroo, and now um, they'll be partnered up with the other thing. So notice that instead of when D was with X, now A is gonna be with X and then B and D were together. Um, don't forget though, that when we're writing formulas, the metal always comes first and the non-metal or the polyatomic ion, the negatively charged thing comes second. So make sure you keep your order right, okay? But so I hope if this helps, great. If not, there's gonna be an example, but basically the first two things swapped places. That's it, all right? So let's take a look at this with a real life actual example. Here we go, we've got a solution of silver nitrate and a solution of sodium chloride. And so our metals are gonna tra trade places, which means the sodium and the silver are gonna swap places and take a look. Here now the silver is attached to the chlorine, okay? Um, and silver is plus one, chlorine is minus one, so they go together nice and evenly. And now, since our silver and our sodium traded places, now our sodium is gonna be with nitrate. Sodium is plus one, nitrate is minus one, so it goes together one to one. That's great, and there we are. It does not matter which one you put first. So I typed um, silver chloride first, but it doesn't matter. You could flip flop the order of these two. You could put this NaNO3 first before the plus, and you could put the AgCl after the plus, and it's the exact same answer. It's like two plus three and three plus two, right? Doesn't matter which order you say it in. Um, this is a nice simple example because everything is plus one minus one. So we don't have to really worry about balancing charges here. So just notice that this silver and this sodium traded places. That's all that it is. Okay, pretty simple. But one cool thing to notice is that we have two solutions here, two aqueous. And at the end, we have an aqueous and a solid. A solid? Yeah. You take two solutions and you get solid chunks that form, which is pretty awesome. Um, and so those solid chunks that form are called a precipitate. And so some you'll hear people call double replacement reactions precipitate reactions because the solid chunks is what forms in one of these reactions oftentimes, which is pretty cool. Um, I will want to let you know that a reaction does not always happen. Sometimes you put two solutions together and they just sit there and nothing happens. Um, but with a double replacement reaction, a, so a reaction always happens if you have a solid that's produced or gas that's produced or if water is made. If any of those three things are made, then you are going to have a reaction that happens. If none of those things are made, if both of your products end up being aqueous, then there's no reaction. Um, Okay, great. But like, how am I supposed to know the states of matter of this? Like, Ms. Culberson, you told me that AGCL is a solid, but like, I don't know that. You told me NaNO3 is aqueous, but I don't know that. Aha, but now you will. Because on the back side of your um, polyatomic ion sheet, we have listed out the rules for determining if something is solid or aqueous. And so we will go through that together in class, but just know that that's on the back side of that sheet that you got to use on like all your quizzes so far this year. And of course you'll be able to use these solubility rules on your quizzes coming up too. And so that will help you figure out states of matters for things so that you will now be able to know, is this thing aqueous or solid or what have you, all right? Um, here's a look at another example of one that's a little bit harder because not all of the charges are one-to-one, -one. okay? So here's lead nitrate plus potassium iodide. And so again here, the lead and the potassium are going to trade places, which means the lead is now gonna be buddied up with iodine. But lead is plus two and iodine is minus one. So we're gonna need two iodines to make that balance. That's why it's PBI2. And remember, our lead and our potassium are trading places. And so our potassium is now going to be with our nitrate. Potassium is plus one. Nitrate is minus one. And that's why those go together evenly. Okay. And so those would be our products. And if I look on the solubility rules and if I follow them, I would see that this shows up as a solid and this shows up as aqueous. Again, I'll explain to you how to use those in class together. 
Um, one thing to note, though, is that this reaction as written is not balanced, okay? Um, you would need to put a 2 in front of the Ki and 2 in front of the KnO3 to balance that. Um, but that is, I'm not so much worried about that at this point in time. I want you to understand that the lead and the potassium trade places, and after they do, we've got to write their formulas. Again, always going back to our charges. Um, we write the formulas of the products based off of those charges. Okay, we'll be doing a bunch of in-class practice with this. We'll be doing a lab with it. But now you've at least got a couple of examples and some notes on how double replacement reactions work.